Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and the transfer shows are back. It's been it's been a long time. I don't know we're a little bit early, um, but the the transfer shows are back. And like Arian says, second time lucky. We had a few tech issues a second ago. I apologize for anyone who was in the other stream, but we're going to get right going on this one. Um, we're going to talk about we some direct quotes from Antonio Conte to to go through in this and his expectations of the January window. We're going to look at what different reporters are saying about the type of player the Tottenham are going to be going to be looking at. We're going to look at. The specific targets, Mohamed Simikan and Ruslan Malinovsky are two names that have been mentioned. And we're also expecting to see a few players go out on loan in the January window. We look at all of that, as well as the players from Spurs that are going to be on the plane to Qatar, uh, kicking off in, what is it, 12 days' time uh, at this stage. Before we do get into that, if you are new to the channel, please do make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We've got so much coming up over the next couple of months. These transfer shows, they're going to come back uh, in full flow. And it's going to be a busy one, as we'll, as we'll hear in a few minutes. There's going to be uh, a lot of work going on for Spurs. And we're starting a little bit early because I think with the way the World Cup is and the, the big gap in the season, I think we're going to see quite a bit of work from Fabio Paracci and Antonio Conte over the next month to try and get players in as quickly as possible in this upcoming uh, transfer window. And look, let's dive straight into it and we have some quotes from Antonio Conte to start with. Uh, asked about what the, the expectation for the January window is. Antonio Conte said, honestly, I don't know what or I don't know what the club will do in January. For sure, the life will always be more difficult in the future. For sure, Tottenham has to challenge with a team like Newcastle. Also, Arsenal, he says as well, it's better to be honest and to tell the truth. Also, if it's a bad truth, but to be honest, because honesty will pay always, always. Basically, what Conte is saying is he he doesn't know how the January window is going to shape up. And he, he's going to be honest about that because the the worst thing that he can do is come out and say to, Spur, to Spurs fans, yeah, we're going to get a centre-back, we're going to get a right wing-back, we're going to get uh, another forward, we're going to get this. And then if he's let down by the board, it looks really, really bad on him. But he's saying the truth is he doesn't know what the, what the club will do. He doesn't know exactly what is going to happen and i i admire and appreciate that honestly for him um we're back one show and we're already running intros at the wrong time um i I'm, I'm i'd rather he be honest and, and and tell us it as it is because we've been burnt too too much before with um with, with false promises and and false dawns with this football club um look, I'm, I'm still optimistic I, I still think we're we're going places but i'm happy that he is um i'm happy that he is just just telling the truth to be honest uh jack and nick great to see you in the chat um simican is an excellent upgrade says jack well we'll talk more about that in a little bit uh, look I've, I've, to be honest moldy pickle it, it will never change as much as i try it will never change um now looking at what type of player tottenham are going to try and bring in what what position we're looking at and it's I think the, the my favourite thing about the, the window in the summer and this window is that we, we know what Tottenham are going to be looking for. In the window, we were told the different positions and ultimately those are the positions that we invested in. And it's looking like it's going to be the same in this window. Dankel Patrick of the Evening Standard has said that upgrades at wing back and centre half and and an understudy for Kulisevsky are next on the Tottenham shopping list. And I, I think it's we, we've, we've nailed the positions that we're looking at there. We need a wing back. Uh, it'll be a right wing back um, unless... Unless Antonio Conte is losing his mind, it will be a right wing back where we're going to upgrade there. Um, centre half, I, I think it could be another another one kind of in the same ilk of, of Clement Longley where he can play centrally, but he can also play out wide if needed. And I would be surprised if it's another left-footed centre back because we have uh, Ben Davis and we have Clement Longley. And I even remarked on it in that game against uh, against Marseille. It was it was quite weird, especially for Tottenham to have to have two left-footed centre backs on the pitch at the same time. It's just not something you you see very often, you know. I, for me, one of the main reasons why why we were priced out of of a Bastoni or a Verdial over the over the summer is because left left footed centre backs at the top level are, are are such a rare commodity. They're they're so hard to come across. And Simican, as we we'll speak about in a bit, he's a right footed player. He he probably might be a, a little bit more attainable. But if if we ended up with three left footed centre halves, I think we'd we'd be. It could be a really good investment in terms of selling them on for profit. But I I don't think that's the route that we'll go. Um, Alistair Gold has said that Tottenham will focus on quality over quantity in January. So over the summer, it was pretty much about getting numbers in, and it's 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 quite quite worrying really that we did focus on getting numbers in, and our problem in the last month has been the size of our squad and and the depth. I mean, the depth is there in terms of numbers, but they're not numbers that we can really put out in the football pitch and and trust to win a match, as we saw last night at the City Ground. Uh, Gold said that Conte is happy with the squad size, but in January he wants to upgrade expendable players to ready-made players. So I, I tweeted out about this last week, or I think it was last week, and I've said from from the moment Fabio Pratchi came in, he's he's been improving the not just the squad but the club. You know, you, you can see what he's doing, what he's trying to do. He's bringing in uh, new scouts like Greta Steinson, who he brought in, I think, from Reading. He had the 
I forget the name of the lad he brought in from from Scotland as well. He's been improving the structure of the club. He's been you know put together a, a fantastic uh, you know coaching squad for for Antonio Conte. And the next part of the step now is to improve, is to get rid of players that we can't quite trust and replace them with players that we can trust because. That summer window, they got the balance of the squad that Antonio Conte wants in terms of having this many right wing backs, this many centre backs, this many left wing backs. We have the the platform and the basis in place now. It's just about picking out. Okay, we don't want Emerson. Let's put this guy in. Uh, ben Davis isn't good enough. Let's get Mohamed Sinekan. You know th- that that kind of idea where we're just improving the numbers now. And one one upgrade that I'm I'm hopefully looking forward to is Lucas Moore being replaced by Malinovsky. I think that would be a fantastic, uh, fantastic replacement to make. And that is, I, I think, the kind of approach that Tottenham will take to this window. Um, uh, Powder says, uh, so perfect player for each position, reasonable pricing, in your opinion, big up for your work. Powder, thank you very much for the, the super chat. I do appreciate it. Um, and thank you for the kind words as well. The, the perfect player for each position reasonable pricing makes that a little bit more difficult um i'll i'd be very happy uh, if we brought in ruslan malinovsky now portal dreams there says as someone who follows the italian league malinovsky is not the answer and arian as well says he'd prefer sabashlai um i i, I just think malinovsky is he's the exact type of player that kulisevsky is now look i'll be honest it's been a couple of years since i regularly watched atalanta and regularly watched the the Serie A, but Malinovsky just seems like a really similar type of player playing on the right left foot. It likes to come in a little bit narrow, can also play a bit more centrally. He's creative. He has has a powerful shot in him. So for me, it's, it's just the type of player that I really, really like. Um, if we had unlimited funds, obviously I'd go for a better player. Maybe a Sabashlai would would fit in then. Um, but in the understudy for Kulisevsky, I'd say him. To be honest, I, I haven't looked too much into names and kind of players that I'd love to see at, um, at wing back and at centre half just yet. Um, but I, 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 I'd like us to sign like players. I, I don't want us to go for names. You know, I, I think some clubs are guilty of of going for a name to appease the fans rather than going for a system player. And I, I don't think Tottenham have ever done that, and I, I don't think we would do that. But I think that's the 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 worst route that we could go in just signing a player just to appease the fans because I think that's what United did with Anthony over the summer. Now, granted, it's worked out quite well, um, but. I'll be looking into Simicam a little bit from what I've seen so far. I'm a big fan of him, so maybe him for centre back. Um, I apologise, I don't have a name for right wing back, but I'll I'll definitely keep that in mind. And I'll, I'll let you know in future streams when I look into it a little bit more. I suppose. Um, final few bits there. Time Sport have said that uh, the same. The Tottenham will push for quality over quantity in the January transfer window. The hierarchy want to give Conte signings that improve the first eleven. Uh, any signing in January has to be proven and ready to go straight into the starting lineup. Um, Arian says Pedro Paro, of course. How could I forget about him? I've, I, was, I was tweeting about him. Pedro Paro, right wing back from Sporting Lisbon. Um, uh, he or Sporting uh, Club. Apologies if there's any Sporting fans watching, which I doubt there is. Um, Paro is, is 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 a brilliant player. A brilliant player. I'd, I'd love to bring him in. I think there could be better options out there. Probably have to splash the cash a little bit more, but I, I definitely wouldn't be opposed to to that happening. Um, Time Sport have also said that Conte wants a new centre back, midfielder, and attacker in January, all of whom should be able to go straight into the eleven. Um, there's a few people there. Um, surprised by how many, but uh, we've Steve Raddy Steve, Steve, fantastic to see you, my friend. I hope you're keeping well. Um, uh, Tottenham Hotspur fan. We've young uh, young Mal as well. Uh, say that we need a new goalkeeper. Um, I, I think Tottenham will get a goalkeeper in the summer. Um, we'll, we'll speak lately about or later on about some names that we have been linked to. I I think that will. That will wait until the summer and we're going to see that kind of gradual replacement of Hugo Lloris that we pretty much saw when he came in. You know, Brad Friedel was playing for the first month or two after we signed Hugo Lloris and I think we'll see something similar next season to to, to gradually replace him. Um, and look, even for those who, who, who think Lloris isn't good enough, it's going to be a massive change. It's going to be a difficult one for the team to make, you know. Larice has played, what, I think it's like 80, 90 Premier League games in a row. He's been here for a decade. It's going to be a massive change, one that will be difficult to get used to for the team more than us. Um, but uh, I, it does need to happen. Uh, Alexander, good to see you. Um, TV, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Bastoni, if, if that's going to happen, uh, will be in the summer. Um, it's just it's, it's just too big a deal to, to happen in January. And that that's the worst part about really needing some upheaval mid season is that a Bastoni sixty seventy million deal very very rarely happens um, in January and I I just don't think it's one that Tottenham will will make. Uh, Powder says Atletico seems to be in shambles. Can we vulture again? Thank you for the super chat. Um, I I think there'll be a lot of teams a lot of teams looking at uh, at Atletico Madrid to to try and take some of their players in in January, but 
they're, they're, I don't think their season, they're playing really, really bad, but they're two points off third place. I think until their most recent game, if I'm not mistaken, where they were beaten, um, they were up in third. So while they're in that really important top four fight, I think they will re be very reluctant to let players go. And that's where it becomes difficult then to, um, to, to start bringing players in from there. But there, there's definitely a few players I think Tottenham will be looking at from, from that side of things. Um, now, look, let's look at the links. Let's look at the players. Let's look at who Tottenham uh, might be trying to bring in. And the, the big name that's been out there at the moment, mentioned by a few very reliable sources, is Mohamed Simakan. Uh, he's a centre-back for RB Leipzig. Before we look at him a little bit more, let's look at the links. Uh, Fabrizio Romano has said that Tottenham Hotspur are eyeing a move for RB Leipzig centre-back Mohamed Simakan, who, as you can see there, is under contract at RB Leipzig until 2026. Uh, Time Sport have also said that Mohamed Simikan has been discussed at Tottenham ahead of January. Uh, they, just to mention quickly as well, they also say that both Alessandro Bastoni and Weston McKenney are also or are still admired by Conte. But Simikan, we're going to have a proper analysis of this guy in the next, uh, let's say, in the next three or four days, bringing on the absolute legend that is Euro expert to to look at his strengths, his qualities, and exactly what he could bring to this Tottenham team. Um, but he's, like I mentioned, a 22-year-old centre-back for Orby Leipzig. He's made uh, 10 appearances in the... Uh, he played last night, which I'm not sure if it was the Cup or the League, but when I took these notes, he'd made nine appearances in the league with one assist. I know he scored last night for Leipzig against Freiburg. Um, I'm just going to double-check if that was League or League or Cup. I think a midweek game was probably Cup. Um, of course, I'm mistaken. It was the League. So he's made 10 appearances in the League with one goal and one assist this season. He, um, he has dual, dual citizenship for Fra uh, France and Guinea. He's appeared uh, twice for the France under-20 team, but hasn't made any appearances at senior level on the international front. Um, he signed he signed his first professional contract with Strasbourg in 2018, uh, score, uh, made his professional debut in a 3-1 Europa League win over Maccabi Haifa a year later. And then uh, last year, on 22nd of March 2021, Simikan agreed to join Leipzig on a five-year deal for, for an undisclosed fee, which then went through when the summer window opened last year. So he's a player that has moved recently, but there's there's a lot of players uh, that I think garner attention in, in European football that they make a move and then one summer later it's when teams really want them and it, it's how we got Christian Romero. You know, he made that move to Atalanta and I know there was a few more kind of technicalities in there where he was technically only halfway through alone. We had to do a lot to make that happen but one year after making that move to to the team he just had a fantastic season and he was wanted by everyone and it seems as though Simikan is a player in in that boat as well and he, he from what I've seen of him from what I've read into him he seems to fit exactly what Tottenham need in a centre-back and he seems to cover some of the weaknesses that we have uh, at, at the back at the moment and looking at Ben Davis and uh, Christian Romero as our two wide centre-backs long lay because he's not permanent I don't want to bring him into this too much just yet but we lack aerial ability and aerial prowess at the um uh, at, at the wide center back roles but Mohamed Simikan is is good in the air and I think we really really need that to, to complement Eric Dyer's aerial ability because we've been outdone from set pieces mainly last season way too much but um but Simikan is, is just good at that and he's really good on, on the ball as well um he ranks really well for progressive passes he's in the top uh top 19 percent uh, for dribbles completed, top 3%, he completes 0 0.62 dribbles per 90 um, in the top 3% of European football. So he's really comfortable in the ball. And you look at that game last night, for example, when Davinson Sanchez was driving forward in possession, he looked like a newborn giraffe. He did not know what to do, where Simican has that ability. And it's it's why, for me, I think Conte needs... The, the idea of Conte out for me just isn't right at the moment because he's using players that just can't play his system. But when you start to see these links that we have and the players that we're looking for and you see these traits that they have and you realise straight away they fit into what we need, give him time, let him build his squad. And Simikan is a player who I think will, will fit very, very well into that. But again, like I said, we'll have a much more in-depth analysis of Simikan uh, in the next couple of days. So please do hit the subscribe button down below if you want to make sure that you're um, you're here for that. Um, now another player that we could be bringing in and we could be uh, going back into the, the, the Serie A for a, a deep dive uh, and it's Ruslan Malinovsky. Uh, there's no particularly reliable links at the moment to him but it's a player that Tottenham were heavily interested in over the summer and according to a lot of reports it's one that we, we, we tried to get done but just, just couldn't pull off in the end. Uh, the few reports that are out there at the moment, Calcio Mercato have said that Tottenham have already made contact with Atalanta over a deal for Malinovsky in January 
and Fabio Paracci is eyeing a potential double deal for Atalanta's Malinovsky and Giorgio Scalvini when the transfer window opens in January. Now, according to uh, Calcio Mercato, Scalvini could set us back 35 million euro, but they're, I'm, I'm not paying too much attention for that one just now because it, it seems like a throwaway comment. But Il Giorno have also said that Tottenham representatives are already moving for a potential Malinovsky deal in January. He's likely to cost around 12.9 million pounds. So it's... It's one that seems to suit Conte and the board. Uh, good player, fits the system, a little bit cheap. Um, he's 29, 30 years of age. Um, so he's he, he he's not going to need a lot of time to, to figure out what he's doing. He's a, he's a very, very experienced player. Not one who's particularly a regular in that Atalanta side, but he's a skilled player. Interesting comments uh, from some of you guys saying that you're, you're not quite convinced. Um, but he's one that we'll definitely look at a lot more over the window as well. Um, Tottenham fans did get quite excited uh, last week when Fabrizio Romano tweeted about Dejan Kulisevsky returning to fitness and being available for that for, for selection for that game against Liverpool. Tottenham fans lost their mind when Malinowski himself actually liked that tweet um, on Twitter and people were saying, ah, well, it's a done deal. You know, it, it, it has to be. But we're not quite there just yet. Um, but I think Malinowski is one to, to keep an eye on. Um, and... You're never going to believe this, but the next player that I'm going to talk about is one that has split the Tottenham fan base a little bit. I know, crazy stuff, the Tottenham fans would disagree in it. Um, and I, I know there's going to be some some very uh, passionate comments in the live chat when I put this picture up, but Marcus Edwards um, is being linked with a return to Tottenham. Um, it, it could just be lazy journalism because he came through our academy. He played well against us in the Champions League. It's a, it's a wonderful story. It could be genuine. Um, it could be real actual links because he's he's a good footballer. He's a very good footballer and we, we all knew that back when he was in the academy but for different reasons, the, the attitude which didn't go down well um, at the club and the... You know the the remarks that Mauricio Pochettino made comparing him to Lionel Messi just put a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and for for loads of different reasons it didn't work out. He went to Portugal, I think he went to Vitoria Guimarães from Spurs, then made that move to Sporting last uh, last year, and he, he's done quite well there. Record Portugal have said that Tottenham are planning a January swoop for Marcus Edwards. Spurs will be able to buy him for thirty million euro. Now the reason that is. Uh, Marcus Edwards has a release clause in his Sporting contract, which is for sixty million euro. However. Tottenham also have a 50% sell-on clause for Marcus Edwards. So if someone else triggers that 60 million, Tottenham get an easy 30. But if we go to try and buy him, that just halves the price, essentially. We get a 50% discount. Um, I'm not quite sure how Daniel Levy managed to, to pull it off to have uh, a 50% sell-on clause in there, but it's, it's going to work out fantastically for Tottenham either way. Uh, Sport TV Portugal have also said that Tottenham Hotspur are close to making an offer for Marcus Edwards. So another one to keep an eye on during the window. Uh, two other links that I'm not too too excited about or too you know pushed by. I, I I don't know how genuine they actually are, but we've links to Anthony Gordon and Times Sport have said that Tottenham could reignite their interest in Anthony Gordon after they were put off by Everton's asking price of sixty million pounds in August. Uh, the Sun have also said that Tottenham are weighing up a January move for Everton winger Anthony Gordon, with early inquiries already made about a move. These they say as well that Chelsea are thought not to be as keen on the player after the appointment of Graham Potter. Uh, and Matteo Moreto has said that Antonio Conte admires N'Golo Kante and Tottenham could rival Barcelona to sign the midfielder on a free transfer with his contract expiring at the end of the season. Um, to, to, to put it bluntly, I don't want Kante at all. Don't want him anywhere near the club. A couple of years ago, he was an absolutely fantastic player, but he's just not the same. He's extremely injury prone. Um, he's out for another couple of months and he'll be missing the World Cup for France, which is, of course, unfortunate for him. Um, but I, I, I don't want that problem with Tottenham, to be honest. And I think our midfield is packed enough as it is. I think we're good enough in there without needing to uh, to bring in someone like Kante, even though obviously he's a player that Antonio Kante loves. He's a player that won the Premier League with Antonio Kante, but at the moment, uh, just, just not for me. On to potential departures. And a player who, another one who's who's splitting the Tottenham fan base and causing causing a bit of a bit of strife among Spurs fans, and that is Jed Spence, uh, Michael Bridge of Sky Sports, and a good friend of the channel has said that you would say that five or six Premier League clubs would take him on loan, maybe even Forest. He wouldn't want to go back to the Championship, but if Spurs made him available for loan, they'd loan him out tomorrow. So basically, Michael Bridge is saying that we we really wouldn't be wanting we wouldn't be short of interest in the player especially after that performance last night for me he has to start on Saturday um I said it before the game had even ended he he has to start on Saturday for that performance he just offers more than than the man he's replacing there Matt Doherty and Emerson Royale 
um, Stellini, Christian Stellini, after the game, or before the game against Nottingham Forest, of course, took that press conference. He was asked about Jed Spence, and he said, for our young players, every game is the game to trust in him. If we think the EFL Cup is important, we need the players who are ready. Jed Spence is one of those for sure. He's working hard. Not every player is the same. They need time. So nice words from Stellini on Jed Spence, who ended up getting about half an hour last night. But I, I, I just don't understand why he's not been given more time, why he's not... Um, why, why he's not getting minutes in the Premier League, why he's not starting games. Um, but I don't know. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It, it's looking likely that he will be loaned out, which for me is really frustrating, but that's the game. That's the game. Um, we stick with our right backs and we speak about Emerson Royale and what could be the best transfer story for January coming up. And Rudy Galetti has said that Juventus have identified Tottenham defender Emerson Royale as their number one target for right wing back with the Bianconeri ready to try and get him next summer. I miss that bit, summer. So it's not for January, it's for the summer. But Juventus apparently very keen on Emerson Royale. Juventus, uh, Nedved, whoever is in charge over there, Allegri, if you're watching, Emerson Royale is an incredible footballer. He's one of the best right-backs I've ever seen at Tottenham. Defensively, unbelievable. Offensively, he'll get you 20, 25 assists every season. So Juventus, come and get him. You deserve him. And uh, I, I hope you enjoy him. Uh, Brian Hill, another player who who could be on his way out in January. Again, only on loan. Alistair Gold has said that Tottenham will allow Brian Hill to leave uh, on loan in January to get regular football, providing they are able to sign a replacement who is more of a direct alternative to Dejan Kulusevski. So maybe, I said a minute ago, maybe Malinowski is coming in for Lucas. It could be Malinowski or that type of player in to replace Brian Hill, but only if we do get that replacement for, for Kulusevski, which is exactly what happened at the end of the summer window when we were trying to make a few moves for forwards and I think Brian Hill was all packed up sitting on his uh, on his front step waiting to, to get that message so he could go on loan to Valencia. Obviously it didn't work out for him but it looks like we're in a, a similar position in January for him. And with Jaffa Tanganga, Calcio Mercado has said that AC Milan want to sign Tottenham defender Jaffa Tanganga in the January window but after drawing the Serie A side in the last 16 of the Champions League, Antonio Conte is ready to reject a move so he doesn't want Tanganga coming up against us in the uh, in the last 16 of the Champions League. Uh, before we move on to some World Cup stuff, uh, some all Spurs related of course, some uh, some some other stories at Spurs, there's a few less slash unknown reliability reports I'd like to bring you so for anyone who is new the, the opening part of the show where we talk about incomings and departures is 99% focus on the reliable reports and the, the stuff that, that, I, that I believe to be true or that I believe to have some some substance to them. This section, because I want to bring you everything that's out there, I just talk about the, the reports that weren't good enough to make it in there just to keep you up to date with everything that is going on. Um, Tudor Sport have said that Tottenham Hotspur could make a move for Juventus youngster Samuel Illing Jr. after the 19-year-old caught the eye in recent Champions League performances. Give Me Sport have said that Tottenham are one of four Premier League clubs eyeing a move for uh, Lille striker Jonathan David before the January transfer window. Mundo Deportivo say that Tottenham remain very interested in Atletico Madrid right wing back Yannick Carrasco and AS have said that Atletico Madrid would be willing to cash in on Carrasco because... Uh, they, they have to raise funds after the money they've lost from being knocked out of the Champions League. Uh, SEO Deportivos have also said that Atletico Madrid have made Joao Felix, Yannick Carrasco, Rodrigo de Paul and Thomas Lamar all available in the January transfer window again to recoup some of that money that they've lost from their European failures. Calcio Mercato, uh, they're telling us that Tottenham have identified Inter Milan wingback Denzel Dumfries as a target for the January transfer window and may use Emerson as a make-weight in any potential deal. They also say that Chelsea have their eye on the player too, and that Inter want £43.5 million pounds or €50 million Euro for the player in the winter window. Graham Bailey, speaking about goalkeepers as we were earlier, says the Spurs hierarchy have identified Everton's Jordan Pickford, Brighton's Robert Sanchez and Leeds's Elam Melier as potential options to replace Hugo Lloris. And Samp News 24 say that Sampdoria could look to renegotiate the terms of Harry Winks' loan deal if he has to undergo surgery and faces three or four months out. Now, as we'll discuss in a second, he has undergone surgery, so something may be about to happen there. Um, Arian says the Mate's ITK show, who says no? I'm not going to claim that. I'm not going to claim that. Um, but, of course, any any support is is always appreciated. Um, Powder says, I'd take Carrasco in a heartbeat. Uh, Luftwing says, I'll be upset if Emerson leaves. Um, uh, let's see what else we got in there. Um, Ari is suggesting a lot of players. Get, get in the scouting team, Ari. That's, that, that's what I'll say. Um, right, let's look at some, some other bits. Let's look at, let's look at Sonny. Let's look at 
our, all of our favourite player, Hyungman Son, and what he has had to say about his potential involvement in the World Cup. And it is good news. Hi everyone, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you all for the messages of support I have received over the last week. I have read so many of them, um, and truly, truly appreciate you all. In a tough time, I received a lot of strength from you. Playing for your country at the World Cup is the dream of so many children growing up, just as it was one of mine too. I won't miss this for the world. I can't wait to represent our beautiful country. See you soon, Sonny. So Son confirming that he will be playing at the World Cup after this collision with Chancel and Bemba in Tottenham's most recent Champions League victory against Marseille left him with four fractures in his eye socket. It, was, it seemed like such an innocuous thing at the time. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, when he first went down, I kind of thought it was just a bit of gamesmanship. Slow the game down a little bit, but a, a, an awful, awful injury for Son. And I know we, we all feared that that he wouldn't make it to the World Cup, but the, the surgery went very, very well. And it looks like he will be on that plane to Qatar um, with South Korea. And I'm not sure I speak for all 150 of us that um, we're, we're absolutely delighted for him. Um, Giovanni Nacelso, a Spurs player that unfortunately won't have the, the same luck with his injury. Um, Roy Neymar said a couple of days ago that Tottenham want Giovanni Lo Celso to undergo surgery for his injury, but the Argentina star doesn't want to rule himself out of the World Cup. So basically what, what's gone on there is uh, Tottenham wanted him to have surgery to, um, to, to fix that injury, but Lo Celso didn't want to do it because he felt he might have had a chance to play through the, in the injury in the World Cup and then have surgery after, but it just came to the point where, where he needed to have the surgery. As Gaston Adul told us, Giovanni Lo Celso is out of the World Cup. The Tottenham midfielder must undergo surgery on a hamstring injury. So bad news there for Lo Celso. And again, I'm sure we all we all feel for him and, uh, and wish him the best in his recovery. He won't be on the plane to Qatar. But let's take a look at the players who will be. And I've, I've splashed the cash on this graphic. I have splashed the cash. Um, it's, it, it's, it's fairly balanced. Um... To be fair, it's it, it's fairly balanced, and in that not confirmed section, I think we all know the top three will be moving left, and the, the bottom two will be moving right. Um, but the, the the players who are on the plane, Pathé Matter, Sar for Senegal, I think is one that that's kind of gone under the radar a little bit. I have to kind of double check that when I was making this graphic. Um, but he will be uh playing or at least be in the squad for Senegal. Eric Dyer, despite his uh, recent poor form, will be there with Harry Kane in Gareth Southgate's camp. Ben Davis and Joe Roden, as always, representing Wales. Hugo Lloris captaining France. We've got Pierre-Emile Hoybier playing with Denmark. Ivan Perisic with Croatia. And Richarlison heading there as Brazil's number nine. The ones that aren't confirmed just yet, uh, we'll put them in two groups. Because Christian Romero, Rodrigo Bentancourt and Hyungman Son, they're, the squads for Argentina, Uruguay and South Korea have not yet been confirmed. But we all know that they're, they are going to be in that squad. And then on the flip side, Brian Hill and Sergio Regalon, um, I don't think will be will be anywhere near that Spain squad. Of course, Regalon's still yet to play for Atletico Madrid after signing for them on loan during the summer. The players that won't be there, the England trio of Harry Winks, as we mentioned, with that injury, Ryan Sessegnon and Oliver Skip. Emerson Royale and Lucas Moura left out of the um, of the Brazil squad. Clement Longley and Ndombele not going for France. And Lacelso with that injury will not be there for Argentina. And the players who haven't qualified who will be doing some wonderful work at Hotspur Way, I'm sure, throughout the duration of the Cup. Kulisevsky, Basuma, Matt Doherty and Davinson Sanchez. Now, as Alexander asked there, a few players left out of this. Uh, Jed Spence, Jaffa Tanganga, um, the two that spring to mind, just haven't played international football yet. And Fraser Forster as well, because he's, he's on the other side of it. These are just players who, who play for their international team, um, who are who at least had a chance of going, I suppose, but Spence and Tanganga haven't yet made a senior appearance, so that is why they have been left out of that. Uh, of course, different reasons for Harry Winks. Absolutely got it. It's come to this. He says, I came here with the hope to give my all to this club, Sampdoria. However, after trying everything to return to playing, a persistent problem I had since the summer has resulted in surgery. I'm positive the procedure went well, and all my focus is on returning as soon as possible to help the team. Thanks for all the support. He's had a, a torrid time with injuries, um, throughout his career, Harry Winks, and I, I, th I think he's the same. He's yet to play for Sampdoria since signing there on loan over the summer. Very similar situation to uh, to, to Sergio Reglan, but it's ever since that injury against Burnley, Winks just hasn't been the same. And, and say what you want about how his form in the last couple of years, but before that moment, he was he was fantastic for Pochettino Spurs, scoring on his debut against West Ham. Um, he was a player that we, we all really did love, but it, it just didn't work out, and the injuries are still there. Um, and of course to Harry Winks as well, I, I don't think he would have been on the plane if he had been fit, but we wish him uh, the, the best in his recovery. Um, so let's look at some good quotes. Let's look at something positive. Uh, and Dan Kulusevsky has been speaking uh, about his, his love for Tottenham and how much he enjoys playing for the football club. He said, I'm like a kid. 
I'm just happy to do what I do. I love the club. I love the stadium. I love the fans. I'm so happy that we have a lot of time left this season and I want to bring a lot of joy. Uh, regarding missing the World Cup, but of course not qualifying uh, with Sweden, he said, we footballers never have time to work on our game, but now we have one month uh, coming up in two weeks. So I'm looking forward to it, doing a good program and coming back much better. So it's it, it's refreshing to see Kulusevsky looking at the positive side of, of missing out in the World Cup with his national team. He's looking forward to, to working on his fitness, of course, just back from injury after a, a layoff of about a month. Um, he'll be doing some some big work at Hotspur Way with the others to, to make sure he's fit and firing for the second half of the season. Um, a few other bits, David Ornstein has said that Harry Kane is helping to mentor Grand Slam tennis champion Emma Raducanu. The Tottenham striker has held several conversations with Raducanu to provide advice on how to approach being in the public eye. Um, and of course the joke straight away where, oh, well, she's never winning another trophy. But I, I, I think it's a wonderful thing. Uh, Harry Kane is, is a man who, who's always dealt with the difficulties of, of the fame and the, you know, the, the visibility that comes of, of being a Premier League star, he's always done so well with it, does a lot of charity work, he gets a lot of abuse, but you never hear him, you know, you, you never you never really see it get to him, I suppose. Um, and it's fantastic for Raducanu, who who really, really leapt into the public eye when she won the US Open last year, to, to have someone like Kane in her corner, just giving her that advice, it, it can only be a good thing for her. Um, uh, Dane Scarlett was refused permission by Tottenham to play in the FA Cup for Portsmouth against Hereford the other week. Uh, Tottenham fans suggesting that maybe that means we're going to recall him in January. You know, if, if he had played and we recalled him, he would have been cup tied. So it's it's a, one less option in the FA Cup. For me, I think it was just precautionary. You know, if if Harry Kane and Richarlison end up getting injured in in the World Cup and we can only bring in one striker, you then you bring back Scarlett as a second option. So I'm not reading too much into that. I just think it's it's purely precautionary from Spurs. Um, on the Champions League draw. Uh, Club Bruges manager Carl Hufkins wanted uh, Tottenham in the draw. He said, "I might have preferred Tottenham or Chelsea, especially Tottenham. They are the same. St- they are of the same strength as Benfica, but is also a huge name in Europe. So, a bit of a dig, but also a compliment there from Hufkins. Uh, I think, I think Bruges ended up getting Benfica actually. Um, and the final bit, the the calendar for the 23-24 Premier League has been confirmed. It will run from the 12th of August 2023 to the 19th of May 2024. And that is all I've notes on. Uh, that's all I've uh, that's all I've spoken about. Georgie says, great work, Matt. Uh, thank you, Georgie. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Martin says, do not give Conte a transfer kitty. He has been a disaster. And giving him funds would be like rewarding your cheating spouse with a new diamond ring. Martin, I have to say, I could not disagree more um, with that comment. Of course, you're you're absolutely entitled to your opinion, and I, I appreciate you coming on here and sharing it. But I, I the, the worst thing Tottenham can do, in my opinion, is not give Antonio Conte money. Um, he's 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 currently working with a pick and mix squad. He's got the remnants of Pochettino's time. He's got a few players that Jose Mourinho brought in. Of course, he's had to sell one or two already. He's got players from that Nuno summer, and he's got players that he signed. He's working with the squad of four different managers right there, and. It, it, it is genuinely baffling to, baffling to me that you can look at the squad that he inherited last last November, just over a year ago. You look at that squad he inherited. You look at the way it was playing. You look at... Oh, Villa are in. Villa have just scored against United. That's pretty funny. You look at the squad that he brought in. You look at the, the, the disarray in the dressing room. All the issues that Tottenham had. He came in, signed two players and got us into the Champions League. There's no other manager who could have done that. I refuse to accept there's any other manager who could have done that. And right now, as bad as things seem, we're out of the League Cup. I'm upset about that. We're on bad form in the league. But as bad as things seem, we're three points clear in the top four. This time last season, we were mid-table. And all thinking, God, I hope we don't even make it to the Conference League. I don't even want that. You know, we obviously would have taken Champions League, but we didn't think it was possible. We didn't want Europa League. We didn't want Conference League. None of us had any faith in this club. And we're in the last 16 of the Champions League. We're after the San Siro. And that is purely down to Antonio Conte and what he has achieved. And the whole idea of, of, of not... Uh, Conte blames everybody but himself and has not signed a new deal. That's hardly commitment. Uh, two things I want to say to that, Martin. Conte blames everybody but himself. I, I, I don't think that's fair. But back when we had our best start to a Premier League season, when we were level on points with City, we were only a couple of points off Arsenal, we were winning every game we played. We were all getting excited. We were all wary of the shortcomings that we had. But there was one man every single game who was telling us, relax, calm down. We still need time. This squad is not ready. You know, I still need two or three transfer windows. Conte, every step of the way, 
has has kept our expectations where they need to be reminded us that we're we're not a team who can go on and, and do what we want to do just yet united have equalized already um we're, we're just not that team conte has told us that time and time again and he went to juventus got money built his squad won the league he went to chelsea got money built his squad won the league he went to inter milan got money built his squad won the league and i'm not saying he's going to win the premier league at tottenham because that's not going to happen he could be here for a decade and that's not going to happen city liverpool and potentially newcastle are, are just too far ahead matt hayhoe good to see you my friend thanks for tuning in um martin says can you defend his fossil football i hate the style of play i absolutely hate it but if we play this incredible attacking football every single game our squad will be too tired. I know every club is in a position where they're playing three games a week. Our squad d- doesn't have enough depth. They'll be too tired. Our defence will be too exposed. Conte is working the best way he can with a-, a bunch of players that can't do what he wants them to do. It's as simple as that for me. And I, I think he, I mean, he's never free of blame. I, I thought he-, he managed that game really poorly last night. I think for a lot of the season, he's been... He's been making subs too late. He hasn't been willing to change games. He's been too stubborn in his style. He's keeping playing Emerson. He's making mistakes all over the place. Absolutely. But we're not going to get a better manager than Antonio Conte. If, if Martin, if you have a suggestion, a man who can come in and do better than Antonio Conte, please let me know. I will find Daniel Levy's email address and I'll send it to him myself. It's just not going to happen. Um, and there was a comment that I had a, a couple of days ago. Um, I just want to bring up um, if I can... If I can find it, it was along the same thing, kind of just giving out about Conte and, and saying he's not good enough. Shane Cousins, um, Shane, thank you for your comment uh, on, on my last video. He says, um, uh, okay, Conte has done nothing but bemoan the quality, the injuries, needing three or four transfer windows, don't trust players. He's not been bemoaning. He's been reminding is the best way I can say it. Because if, if we want to sit here, we want to go on Twitter, we want to go on YouTube, we want to go down the pub and speak to people and and give out about give out about Emerson. We want to give out about Dyer. We want to give out about uh, Cessignon, Lloris, all this. And, but then we give out when Conte does the same. If Conte does the same, because he, he never has named individual players, it's not good enough. Th- there's a bit of hypocrisy there. Conte is saying what we're all thinking. Whenever he he says we we've been uh you know, we've been unlucky with injuries or the squad's not good enough, or when he said after that game against Burnley where the level of Tottenham is not so high. Every single one of us agreed with those comments. Every single Tottenham fan agreed with that. And it's refreshing, like I said at the top of the stream, when he's saying we don't really know what's going to happen in the in the January window. It's refreshing to hear that honesty. It really is. And we also have to remember that Conte sometimes says things in the press for, for the point of getting a reaction, to, to send a message to the board, to send a message to Enoch. I've no doubt that he's come out in press conferences, criticised the squad, and then gone into the dressing room and said, lads, I didn't mean that. I just want to get you an extra couple of players. Um, uh, Shane as well says seven players are brought in by Paratici the man Conte trusts completely well now those players are not trusted and not good enough um, I, I I think Fabio Paratici and Conte for the players they've brought in are being horrendously slandered you look, Emerson awful signing awful signing um, I think it was, it was a Brian Hill not lived up the expectation that we all had um, uh struggling to think of other signings that haven't worked, but in the 18 months that Prachi has been here, Bentancourt, Kulazewski and Romero have all completely transformed our team. 100% complete turn. This squad and this club right now, compared to where it was before those players, it's night and day. It was, for me, the last time we signed a player like that was Son in 2015, and it took a year for him to even start to, to, to properly get going. Three signings like that, of that quality, with that effect, it just doesn't happen, Tottenham Hotspur. And it's because of those men. Um, Shane says, uh, do you realise we've not beaten anyone in the top six all season? That's not good enough. Absolutely, I'll agree with that. We've got all our points from teams outside that are close to the bottom. We've been lucky against those teams, apart from Fulham. Um, and then he's saying how Eddie Howe has done much better at um, at Newcastle. Um, he says, Conte is arrogant, stubborn, and tactically inept, which I... To, to call Conte tactically inept is for me is is just such a, a a reactionary thing. First of all, it's um yes he has shortcomings. This is a new position for him. He's never come into a team like Tottenham and and wanted to to have a project. It's new for him and he's going to make mistakes. If we're going to jump on him at the the first mistake he makes now the first time that he's actually struggling to get results as our manager, that there's no more point of this football club. 
there really isn't because uh, Martin, you say bringing back back in Poch, um, he he was not backed. Pa- I I love Pochettino. I there's 162 of you watching. I would bet my life savings that I love Pochettino more than every single one of you. What he did for this football club, it was transformational. It was it was revolutionary, and it was something that at that time, again, no other manager could have done. But Conte, for what we're doing right now and for what we need, is it's just it's, he's so much better than Poch. He is so much better than Poch. He, he he is a serial winner. He wins trophies. He commands the utmost 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 respect in football. He is one of the best managers out there, and I I wouldn't swap him for Poch. And that's coming from someone who who, who loves Poch more than anybody. Uh, Tongyi with the the seven dollars super super sticker says, "Good job, thank you very much for that." Um, I I, I do appreciate it. But look. There's going to be a lot of, of, of Conte in, Conte out chat um, over the, the coming weeks and months, I'm sure. Um, but but for me, it's it's going down the same route that we've gone down with Poch and with Nuno and with Jose. Um, and if we're just going to sack our managers every 18 months, what, what are we doing here? You know, wh- where are we going? Um, it's it, it became a fad in football that you sack their managers when things aren't fantastic. Um, of course, Tottenham have done that, but looking at some teams in the Premier League, Liverpool are the best example. They gave Klopp a couple of years to to, to make things happen. Look at them now. Um, Arsenal gave Arteta time. Leicester, even now with Brendan Rodgers, Nottingham Forest with Steve Cooper. Giving managers time seems to work right now. And for me, there shouldn't even be a conversation. We shouldn't even be talking about whether or not Conte needs time. Conte deserves time. He is a world-class manager, one of the best in the world. Tottenham are so lucky to have him. So, so lucky to have him. Sometimes I still can't believe... That, that he is Tottenham manager. But sometimes I, I do get extremely frustrated with him and sometimes I wish he made different decisions. But the transformation of this club from last year to now, um, again, it's not the most relevant comment given how the last month has gone, but overall the, the difference is um, is massive and, and Conte is the reason, uh, the reason of that for me. Look, look anyway, um, we're going to talk about that a lot. I'm sure, but we're also going to talk a lot about transfers over the next three or so months. Um, starting early, like I said, I think Prachi and Conte will be doing a lot of work over the international break, over the, the World Cup, to, to to get some deals done for Tottenham. Uh, we'll be looking at bringing in at least three players ready-made for the starting eleven at centre-back, wing-back and uh, forward this January window. And this is your number one place to keep right up to date with all of Tottenham's transfer news. We don't just bring you the headlines in the newspapers and say, this is this. We go through the news. We, we look at what's realistic, what's not, who are the good sources, who aren't. Um, and even if I may say so myself, it's the number one place for Tottenham transfer news on YouTube. So please do hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Make sure to like this stream if you have enjoyed it. We're on 52 with 152 of you watching. Um, so I'm sure we can get that number up to 75 if a few more of you just smash that like button. Uh, but from me, for now, and as always, thank you so much for watching.